everybody, how's it going out there? Adapa11 here with another Star Wars vehicle review. Now, my wife and I, several weeks ago, went to the Walmart down the street. For us, it's a super Walmart that is new. It's probably about eight months old. It's the first time we went in it. We're Honestly, we're not big Walmart fans, but I'm glad we went this time because this was on clearance. Picked us up for $30. And yeah, I can see that it's detached and... It has been opened, you can tell, because this is scotch tape here. So I did open it when I got home, and, and I made sure that everything was copacetic. But for 30 bucks, yeah, cool. Now, I do have the Black Series Battle of Endor, and I've done a review on that. But this one, this can fit better in a Hoth setting. As you can see, the discoloration, well, it's not as dark as the Black Series Battle of Endor. We'll do a comparison at the end, but anyhow... Let's take a look at this from 2016. It's the Imperial ATST Walker with a, an Imperial driver. And it does give a pretty cool description on the back, very short. The two man ATST is a lightly armed Walker featuring chin mounted laser cannons and side mounted weapon pods. The two legged transport, dubbed the Scout Walker by many, serves as a recon and a patrol vehicle. Okay, and then. Give some pictures there. So, well, enough talking about the box and whatnot. Nothing to it. Let's open it up and check it out. Okay, so here we have the ATST driver. He is identical to the ATST driver offered on the Battle on Endor from a few years ago, like 2013. I might be off a year or two on that. I just don't remember. So here he is, as you can see, he's the same. Maybe a slightly different shade of tone or whatnot in the skin or in the face but it's pretty much the same guy so anyways his articulation goes as follows he has ball joint articulation at the ankles knees this is both sides bilateral swivel at the hips he has a swivel at the hips as well as an abdominal crunch swivel at the forearms Ball joint articulation at the elbows bilateral and shoulders. And of course the head. He's got a okay facial sculpt in my opinion. It does look like maybe he's missing a little bit uh, on the... Come on, focus. There we go. Yeah, it looks like maybe some of his eyebrow was scratched off. And the hairline right there. So maybe it's from the part, maybe something got loose. Well, as you saw, the head was loose, but I'm not worried about it. I guess it will give him a little bit of a distinction from the other one. Maybe a battle scar. There we go. So anyways, you see the blaster pistol. He doesn't have any, or it doesn't have any color. It's just the black uh, blaster pistol. Ooh. No holster. Wah, 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 wah. And at least the boots are colored through and through. Okay, and uh, this harness does appear to come off. You know, I don't think I ever took the one off on the other. And I'm not going to here because I don't want to break a brand new figure. But it looks like it'd have to be, no, it'd have to be worked pretty good. It's, it's on there. Anyways, here's the helmet. It fell off this. It's turned around. There's, there it is. The goggles are just part of the helmet and it's painted. And here we go. Have an ATST driver. You know what's funny is just a few months ago, well, maybe a year ago, I only had one or two. Then I had a trade with T Biz and got one in that trade and picked up or finally opened, I should say, some of my other figures. And now I at least have, I think, maybe six. I'll have to count. Well, anyways, let's get on to the ATST. Okay, it came assembled. The TST came assembled in three different parts. As you see here, you have the main lower body, one of its cannons right here, and the head, of course. Now here, we see that this has a very unique set of joints. It's very well articulated. Now, in my initial review of the ATST from the Battle on Endor, which we will do a comparison, I gave it a... I, was, I really liked it at that time, but this time... I will explain and show in comparison to the other ATSTs from, oh, I believe Power of the Jedi and Kenner. 
The feet are a bit small for my liking. It would be nice if they were a bit big, but you see here above this foot, it's articulated right here. Also here where it's, uh, well, like tibia, fibia, I guess it would line up with uh, this part right here, which I guess, you know, the tib and, tibia and fibia are usually right here on the human, but uh, I guess you could say it would extend lower here. So there's articulation. Articulation uh, here at the knee joint. And here would be its femur, thigh bone. And the, the hip joint, it's articulated very well right here. And also it another hip joint to the to its core. Both sides, of course. So you can see it, you can very well manipulate this into a many, many uh, diorama settings. Running, <laughs> tumbling over the logs. Okay, now you see here, here's the, uh, where the, the head will insert. This is the female uh, part. And here's the back. I like it's at least got some kind of paint detail, black and, and brown. Not much detail here, but I mean, better than nothing. It's cool. So, I'll set this here. If I remember correctly, it's, uh, it was a little difficult to set up initially just because of the weight of the head. So, I might as well show you the head here so it's here and easy to show you in the cockpit before I put it on. Here's a latch right here, or hatch. I like that. This also, will, this is this guardrail right here. Three pieces, one, two, three. If you want to open this up, cool. Got a, like a hatch that comes open. And then it's uh, got stickers already applied. Oops. Let me get down here in a better position. Here we go. You can see here the stickers are already applied. That makes it much easier to deal with sometimes, you know, when you're in your 40s. The hands kind of shake a little bit maybe. I don't know about you, but me, yes. So it's nice, nice not to have to put stickers on. And the eyes, well, you know, of course, they deteriorate with time with some of us. A little bit of paint detail on the chairs, seats. Nothing on the consoles, that's kind of lame. Here's the sticker on the its right side. That's cool. Nothing on the front, unfortunately. Okay, so the eyes, eye, eye hatches come up. And it's a nice little detail right there, I think. And you could have grenades smoke grenades, some kind of projectiles from here at pivots. And of course you have your blasters here. And then you have its chin gun, which does, it's stiff. And you have this chin gun which has projectiles here's the button now well, let me put this on first and let me switch out the guns okay I didn't want to spend time like messing with it but anyways it was pretty easy it did just pop off right here you can see just popped it off and then here's this one it's rather large <laughs> exaggerated a bit Sorry, I'm gonna take this off screen, bring it closer, there we go. Okay, so you have your neck right here. Just put it in there. There we go. This is really cool. I mean, it has, it has its pros and cons, like with anything. Okay, there we go. Oh, there went my knee, bow, that popped. Whew. That did not feel good. Anyways, so here we have the ATST in its upright position with its projectile cannons ready to go. So 
Let's move over here some of this material. I'll move the ATST driver over here. And I will move this to the side so you can get up. Oh, there goes that tricky articulation. See, it's front heavy, so it wants to. There we go. And then here we have the indoor, Battle on Indoor. You can see the color variation here. Oops, I'm getting clumsy here. Here we can see the difference in color variation between the two. So yes, it's cool. I'm happy that I can use the one on the left with a Hoth diorama and not have to worry about the color, discoloration or the difference. And let's see how the projectiles work. Wow, that actually hit pretty good. Looked like both of them shot, yep. Both of them shoot at the same time. Shoot it from a POV from the camera angle here. Cool. Like I said, the articulation is tricky kind of at first because it, the head is heavy, the feet are small. Now, I will show you what the Power of the Force ATST Walker. Well, I should I should say that this one right here is from Battle or Def Defense of Hoth or Battle of Hoth. I just did a review recently on it, but it's a mold of the early or original model. And you can see its feet are much bigger, more appropriate actually to have these feet on these ATSCs. If you, I mean, that's just my personal opinion, especially with the size of the head. It's a big difference, I think. And look how much bigger the head is. Okay, so you know, you can see here, it's really nice to have that difference where you can have the cockpit. Now, oops, the cockpit's eyes will open up. You have the projectiles, the option of projectiles versus uh, the standard guns. Let me back it up right here. You can see the two, the one on the far left, one on the far right. Let me get the this one out of the way. So yeah, if the feet were a little bit bigger, it would, I think, work well better but the articulation you can really do a lot of different things with the articulation i haven't done a stop motion yet but i will one day i guarantee it i will have to try it out i'll just have to learn how to do it and this to me would be wow wonderful for something like that because of the amount of articulation you have on here dude i bet that would take a long time so let's take a look at maybe at some other detail you can see here the ch on the, the chest, there's really just that one cable painted, painted on. The gun is a little bit exaggerated because it has the projectiles. Here's the bottom with some screws. It's tiny feet. They are tiny feet. Here's the view from the side. Of course, you can look at the pictures and whatnot in the from the diorama at the beginning, but I thought I would just go ahead and show you what it looks like via video here. Here's the back. I like the different paint detail right here, a little bit of gray. Cool. All right. I mean, and then when you get to the front and side, you just have the, the light brown. So, I mean, in person, honestly, it's like, I don't know if it looks like it would go perfect with, uh, with, well, hey, uh, Jakku or um, Tantooine. I'm really struggling right now for names. Uh, uh, not, oh, wow, Jadia, Jadia on Rogue One. Gosh, I know I got the name wrong. Oh uh, well. Anyways, you could see here it would go well in a desert, a light desert. You could pretend like that's a little bit of dust, but it could get you could get away with it on Hoth. Well, anyways, well I hope I covered everything. You can see here though, there's no carbon swearing right here from damage. That's what I like about this one is that it does have a little bit of battle damage.
painted on there. Well, I guess that's about it. I could show you right here, here are the guns. Well, suppose that it. Now I, I suppose that's it. Now I just have this one more vehicle to add to the Hoth. Well, I really appreciate the time and uh, thanks for the thumbs up and the subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Take a look at my other videos and uh, if you have any recommendations, hey, if I have it, maybe I'll do a review on it. Anyways, thanks everybody and I really appreciate it. Take care and may the force be with you. Goodbye.